let's look at the next example uh, in our packet for today. Uh, and so uh, it says, assume that the height of women in the US is normally distributed with a mean value of 65 inches and a standard deviation of two inches. So we looked at this problem uh, last week, I believe. And actually let's go ahead and finish filling in the blanks. Uh, we refer to, um, my pen is misbehaving. I'm not sure, I can't distinguish between my finger and my pen, my Apple pen for some reason. Uh, but remember X bar is sometimes called an unbiased estimator of the actual parameter mu. Because uh, again, assuming it comes from a simple random sample, that data is uh, random. It might be too high, it might be too low, but it doesn't have bias. Uh, the only bias is random chance. Um, and again, another conclusion that we kind of walk through is that uh, larger samples are more accurate on average than small samples. Again, not guaranteed to be better, but on average they are better. Um, but okay, so if this is the distribution of height of women in the United States, uh, it says, would the height of 10 random women from our class be an SRS. So let's say I took uh, our particular stats class this summer and I asked uh, the 10, 10 women in our class, which are approximately 10 of you, what is your height and use that as an average. I didn't collect this data, uh, I could have, but would it be an SRS? So the answer to this question, uh, you can go ahead and think about this pause and think for yourself is no, because our class uh, is not a random sample of US women, right? This, this the population being described here is United, women in the United States. However, college students, is, is bi there's some bias there, right? College students might be taller than your average US women. It could also be because their age, right? As women get older, they get shorter. Well, same with men, but you know, there's a lot of factors that are at play. Um, and the fact that we're taking specific college students uh, from a particular class is not a simple random sample. So if we're trying to do these sorts of statistics, uh, we can't use data from our class. We would need random women from the United States. Again, getting that data uh, is difficult and you can try to explain that in your own words. So let's say uh, we were given a simple random sample of 10 women in the United States. We could say, okay, what is X bar and what is S? Remember this means the uh, X bar is the mean and S is the standard deviation. Actually, let me go ahead and teach you how to do this in a calculator since I don't believe we've discussed this yet in our in this particular course. Uh, and if we have, you can skip over. If you already know how, you can skip over this. But basically, uh, one way of doing it is by using what the list feature of your calculator. It's basically like a table where you can store information. And you can access a lot of this from this button right here, the stat button, or if you can see above it is list. If you click stat, the very first option is edit. And what this will do is it will actually edit the lists in your calculator. And notice when I go into here, I see L1, L2, L3, that basically you can type in lists kind of like you would type data into Excel. Um, and um, let me go ahead and get out of here. Um, but basically, let's go ahead and store all our data in list one. And let's take these, the sample of 10 women in the US, which are, you know, we've got one who's five foot four, five foot eight, five foot five, five foot seven, et cetera. And we'll type these in. So um, basically 64, uh, enter. If you hit enter, it will drop down to the next list entry. And I'm just gonna put all these data points in the first column. You wanna make sure to put them all in the same column because that is the individual list that we're analyzing. Six, five foot seven, five foot four, five foot six, and five foot six. And again, if you think about the height of random women in our class, we might get different data. It would probably be a little bit taller than the United States as a whole, again, just due to random bias. Um, anyways, not sorry, not random bias, just due to methodol methodological biases. Okay, anyways, now we have our data in our list. So how do we calculate the mean and the standard deviation? Well, if we go back to the main menu, this is where the calculator calculates things. Uh, and this is, this is at least how I like to do it. But if you go into the stat menu, Notice there's an option calculate, and this is where a lot of things, uh, a lot of the things are. Um, and so you can actually look through a lot of what's in here. Actually, sorry, it's in the list menu, I, I'm, I'm mistaken. But if you go into the list menu right there, you have to hit second stat to access this. And if you go over to math, this is where a lot of your statistical basic calculations of central tendency are. Notice that you have mean, median, 
standard deviation, all of those things are here. So let's say we wanted to know what is the average value mean. Um, basically, uh, you could do that. Uh, and then what I need to, what I'm trying to tell the calculator to do is take the average value of L1, that first list. And actually, if you notice in blue, uh, there's actually L1, you can't see it because my head's in the way. Once again, let me, move, let me move myself for a second. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Notice L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and L6 are right there. If you just hit second L1, or second one, oops, second one, this will give us mean L1. And th this is exactly how you do it. Basically, you take the average of the first list and it will tell us. Obviously, you could do these calculations on your own, but basically our X bar for these 10 random women uh, would be 65.4 repeating as their average. Uh, and same thing for standard deviation. If you go second list and you go over to math, notice we've got standard deviation is number seven. Standard deviation, you could do variance, you could do all sorts of things, but standard deviation, again, if you hit second one, that will take the standard deviation of list one. And same thing you could do for list two, list three. You could store lots of different data in at once. So just like you, you can use your calculator sort of like Excel where you store data points um, and you uh, can do mathematical calculations for them. I think using Excel is easier, obviously, but uh, you know, if you were taking a, a test in person, you wouldn't be able to use Excel, but you'd be often allowed to use a graphing calculator and they have the same features. But anyways, the standard deviation of this is 1.878 approximately. So uh, the next question asks, what's the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution when n is equal to 10? So this is a different question. This is something that's not to be confused. So we have like, what is our statistics? What is the data for a particular sample? Now distribution is something different. And the, the important thing is the mean of the sampling distribution. Remember the mean of the entire population was 65. Now the mean of the sampling distribution itself uh, is going to be, the, it will have the same mean, it will be equal to 65 as well because the mean will not change when you're taking a lot of samples. It's sort of like, notice how this mean was close to 65, but it could have been a lot higher. It could have been 68, it could have been 64. That was That's kind of the key idea. When I take a sample, every time it's different. So it could have a different answer. The sampling distribution is the distribution of all of the different types of answers you could get from the data. Now, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is sigma divided by the square root of n. Again, I emphasized that formula in the, in the previous video. Um, but basically, if I were to take it, the, the standard deviation of the actual women was two inches. And if I divide that by the square root of the sample size, I would get the standard deviation of the distribution. It's different than this. This is, this is not the standard deviation of the distribution. It's the standard deviation of the sample. The sampling distribution is something different. Uh, and it's always just equal to the original standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So that's gonna be approximately 0 0.632. And what this is saying is that if I take a random sample, its variation is approximately 0 0.632 uh, of the distribution. It has nothing to do with this at all because we'd expect the standard deviation of a sample to be roughly close to the original. But there again, this is, doesn't have any outliers. What if we had a woman who was six foot tall, 72 inches? That standard deviation could be really, really large. It could be really, really small. But the distribution itself will get closer and closer of those different data points. Uh, and you know, another thing is what's the mean and standard deviation of the sample distribution when n is equal to 30? Well, again, the mean will never change, but the standard deviation will get smaller and smaller because the more data points we use in our sampling distribution, or in each individual sample, the less likely it has to be different, the more closely clustered to the center we will have it. Uh, and so again, we do two divided by the square root of three to answer this question, and we would get approximately 0 0.365. And sort of what I'm imagining is looking at a distribution, again, what, what's kind of hard to do with this information is we actually looking at a sampling distribution. So. Uh, at the bottom of this page, I actually provided some graphs for various sampling distributions for different women. Uh, and let's go back to the lecture slides to look through to, to try to examine. So in the slides for this week, what I did is I created a bunch of random samples of women from the United States. Uh, and I, just to illustrate this idea, 
of why does, why does the standard deviation get smaller when I have a larger sample size? So uh, what I did is I took 40 simple random samples uh, of 10 random women in the US. Um, and how I did this, I didn't use actual data and actual points, but what I did is I used a feature in Excel, um, the RAND feature to generate various data points with different Z-scores to generate heights of women and I took the average of those sampling distributions. So what I did is I did 40 different samples of uh, 10 women uh, kind of by doing this. And I took their average and I graphed what is the average values from the different results. And it looks like I got 10 results that got an average between 64.9 and 65.1. So notice that I got a lot of uh, data points that were really close to the true mean. Remember the true mean of this example is 65. And then I got, uh, looks like five data points that had somewhere like 0.2 or 0.3 larger as their average, uh, four data points that were larger, and you know, between two and three data points that were much smaller. And I got nothing beyond 66 um, and nothing smaller than 64. So everything was pretty well clustered. And I did this a lot of different times because again, every time you do it, you're gonna get different data points. That's the idea of randomness. Randomness creates differentiation. So I did again, got something a little different, but again, notice that the true mean here is right around 65. Uh, and then again, we get a little bit of variation, a little bit more. And notice again, it's not exactly normal, but it follows a rough normal distribution. And the more and more samples you include, the more normal it will become as well, as the sample size affects the standard deviation. So in the next slide, uh, I, I did more and more and more, and we looked at more and more different data. And you could kind of combine this all together to take more and more sizes, but again, notice that the mean always comes out right at around the actual mean, basically the height of the data, and it generally follows a normal distribution, not, not perfect as well. But again, it's not a huge sample size. So the next thing I did is, well, what if I did 120 times? What if I combine all that data together? Because when I look at it all in different little clumps, it kind of, the distributions all look kind of different. But if I kind of join all that data together, notice it is very, very normal. Uh, and this is kind of the idea that's illustrated in the central limit theorem. I'm gonna get more into that in the next video. Um, but again, doing 10 women at a time, we see that we have about, the, the average value of the height of those women is right in the middle, right about 65. Uh, and you know what we get is uh, a, a, um, a normal distribution. So the, thing, the next thing I did is, well, what if we increase the actual sample size to say 30 or 100? But basically what will change is the standard deviation. Here we have a fairly big spread and I'd say the standard deviation, you know, is something around maybe 0.5 inches, 0.7 inches. I don't, I don't know. We could actually do that math if we have, you know, if we looked at the data, um, which we're, we're not going to bother with. But if I took, uh, say, a sample size of 30 and did took a look at a whole lot of those, notice that, again, the mean is the actual mean of the population, 65. Uh, but... What we get is the standard deviation is much smaller. There's men, m m quite a few less, there's, there's less outliers. Like looking at the previous chart, sorry, I forgot to title some of these, but there were some data points where we got an average even in the 63s or high 66s. Um, but when I took uh, a larger sample size, there were less outliers. There was nobody above 66. There were no data points below 64. It is more closely clustered together. And the standard deviation is much smaller Again, going back to that math, right? When we took a sample size of 10, we got a standard deviation of 0.6. And notice that seems about right here, right? The spread of the data is larger. When I took a smaller sample size, the spread of this data is something, you know, is more like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. That is the math we were looking at when we were when we're doing the math sigma divided by the square root of n, because the sample size affects the spread of a sampling distribution. And kind of comparing those different distributions. Uh, notice we get a much tighter density uh, when we have a larger sample size. The original distribution has its own normal distribution, but when we take a sampling distribution, it becomes more closely clustered. And the standard deviation gets reduced um, when we have that reduction. And again, this is what I'm trying to illustrate in this. And this is the idea behind the central limit theorem, which I will, I'll save for the next video.